Nu ska det handla om kontroversiella affärer. Hur hanterar man affärer som skapar medial uppmärksamhet står det i rubriken. Och nästa gäst, han är född och uppväxt i en av de mest kontroversiella branscherna. Bolaget är ofta kritiserat i media. Det gillar han inte. Men det är också minst lika dyrkat av alla aktieägare och aktiesparare som nästan har ett fänklab liknande förhållande till bolaget. Det gillar han säkert betydligt bättre. Vi talar om olja. Vi talar om Lundin Petroleum. Välkommen upp, oljemiljardären och styrelsens ordförande, Ian Lundin. En stor applåd. Låt oss göra en liten eh, popularitetsgallop nu ändå här bland publiken. Hur många är det som gillar Lundin Petroleum? Upp med en hand. Ser du? Tack, tack. Man känner sig hemma. Du verkar bra med man vänner. Ja. Så då kan du tala fritt och berätta allt. Det är rätt bra att veta. Ja, det just det. Just det. Du, vi har ju ett litet eh, delikat dilemma här. Det är ju då så, är det svenska eller engelska vi ska prata? Och ja, det blir lite swinglish. Swinglish är en bra kompromiss. Mm. Alltså, många säger ju att Ian Lundin talar alldeles utmärkt svenska. Andra säger att nej, han vill helst tala engelska. Jag talar mycket bättre svenska. Jag förstår. Jag uttrycker mig bättre på engelska när det gäller sådana viktiga ämnen. Men, um, vi kan blanda lite. Vi kan blanda lite. Okay. Jag kör svenska och du kör vad du vill. Ja. Det blir bra. Så, gör så. En utmärkt kompromiss. Ja, ja. Um, du leder ju ett av våra kanske mest aktieägarvänliga bolag på börsen. Ändå hamnar ni titt som tätt i blåsväder i massmedia. Vad tror du det beror på? I'll take that one in English maybe. Uh, <laughs> Tricky question. <laughs> um, no, I think uh, the, the fact is that uh, London Petroleum has uh, had a tremendous uh, ride. You know, since we uh, listed in uh, 2001, we have uh, performed better than uh, the Apple Corporation. Uh, over the last uh, 10 to 11 years, and uh, a lot of that uh, that success is backed is is based on uh, on our belief, uh, our vision that uh, I think my father had uh, from the the beginning, and the belief in the people that uh, that can uh, deliver uh, the goods and then you know create shareholder value. Uh, Norway has been uh, the last, obviously the the, the big catalyst uh, for the company. Uh, now we are leading the way, and as, as an independent oil company, we're leading the way in Norway, and we are transforming the Norwegian oil industry, which is quite amazing when you think about it. You have a, here you have a Swedish company. Vi ska which, återkomma till det. Okay. Men mm. varför tror du att det blir så ofta blåsväder i massmedia? Var frågan? Well, that I was going to answer by saying that you know, of course, success leads to to uh, media attention. Right. And uh, you would you could say that you know if if we didn't have this type of success, then the media would probably not take so much interest in us. <laughs> so there's a direct link, I would say, between uh, between our success and the media attention. Känner du dig orättvist behandlad? I would say that you know there we are probably uh, misunderstood. There's a, there's probably a lack of uh, um, there's a there's a bad perception in the media of us uh, and that is partly our own fault i think that uh, we should have been more proactive probably in presenting ourselves and explaining exactly being more transparent in terms of uh, you know the, the activities we have around the world and um, i think the media of course um, likes to take certain parts of the business and blow that up Whereas you know the, the the real the real exciting part of the business is maybe you know uh, pushed aside and, and and which is really what's more interesting for our shareholders. Vi ska strax återkomma till de riktigt spännande framtidssakerna i bolaget. Men vi måste ta några såna här gamla surdegar ja. först. Du några ganska färska exempel trots allt. Vi har ju den eviga följetongen med Carl Bildt yes. som var tidigare styrelsemedlem hos dig. Vad betydde han för styrelsearbetet under den perioden? 
Well, Carl, um, Carl was on the board uh, between 2001 and 2006. Um, I got to know Carl as uh, a very uh, highly intellectual person who always, who always spoke his mind. He was, he was a very good, I would say, addition to the board in the sense that he, he, he really, uh, you know, uh, initiated the very interesting discussions and, uh, and also, you know, helped to, to, to you know, I, I guess, influence some board decisions for sure. I mean, but he, you know, he wasn't, you know, the, the, he wasn't running the day-to-day -day operation or he wasn't actively involved on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, his involvement was very positive and, uh, and uh, I was, you know, uh, sorry to see him leave. Har han gett eh, bolaget några politiska fördelar i internationella kontakter eller så? No, I mean, and contrary to what people think, uh, Carl Bildt never made any money out of his board position. <laughs> um, he, he, he um, you know, he's, he's not that type of a person. He just, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a true, true and hearty uh, civil servant and uh, That's, uh, you know, that's the way the, the man uh, thinks and operates. And uh, I think that, um, you know, that's, that perception was, again, uh, just maybe our, our fault for not uh, making it clear. I think it's more that he has guided or helped lotsat the company through political No, no I mean, he, he provided a very good advice, but he never, mm. gave, never made any, uh, never opened any doors, so to speak. Vilka tankar hade du när du när ni valde in honom? Vad var du, du såg för möjligheter? Vilka tankar? Vad va ville du med hans eh, engagemang? No, I think uh, I mean he um, when he joined uh, he joined the board um, um, in the early days uh, it was my father who uh, who asked him to join um, and uh, we thought we wanted to add some variety some some new direction maybe or some some different angle. Uh, to to our to uh, to the board and uh, I think like I said he was a very board a very good addition to the board but he never had any any uh, um, I would say um, involvement in day to day activity. Had any involved in him if you had known that it would be such a timely life? No. Do how many times did you have a meal? Do you recall? We we met uh, we had uh, board meetings maybe uh, three times a year. Vad brukar ni prata om? Till middag men jag nu alltså. During those, uh, those that, it was uh, very general discussions. Men just till middag efter när när du klarat av alla affärs samtal. <laughs> yeah. Vad blir det då? No, he, uh, he you know he he was uh, a type of person that uh, you could he is very mesmerizing, you know, he when he, he has an, <coughs> an incredible intellectual capacity. So so you know when he's at the dinner table most people You know, when he when he speaks up, people go quiet and listen to what he has to say, and mm. you, you feel you feel quite uh, enriched afterwards. Do we know again? En annan het potatis är ju förstås Lundinbolaget inom situationstecken Africa Oil och dess engagemang i Etiopien, särskilt nu efter då de uppmärksammade fängslade journalisterna Johan Persson och Martin Schibbi. När de nyligen kom hem så blev det en ny ström av snack runt uh, Lundin och anklagelser. Vad, vad tänker du om det? Vad? Well, we don't really have anything to say or any comment uh, to, to add uh, to this, uh, this whole saga. I think that, um, you know, other than the fact that we, you know, we're obviously happy that they, they managed to, to, to get back and they're now back with their families. Um, you know, we, we had obviously no influence over that. Uh, we didn't really understand why we were involved in the first place uh, because we did never had any activities. Lundin Patrol never had any, any operational activities. It certainly did not have any activities when they uh, decided to, to enter the country. So there was no, absolutely uh, no reason for them to, to come visit. If they wanted to, to, to visit one of our operations, uh, be it in, uh, you know, anywhere else in the world uh, where we were actively operate, we would have, you know, gladly, to, gladly assisted them. <laughs> And they would just have to, to call us and ask us uh, for, for help. And that uh, they never did. Do you want to ring now? No, no, nobody's contacted us there. But again, if you know, somebody does contact us or contacts uh, Robert, then we would uh, be glad to, uh, to, to, to answer questions they may have. We'll give them a tip to 
ringa. Du, hur hanterar ni balansgången att vara ett svenskt, svenskt mm. <laughs> på den svenska börsen i alla fall? Etiskt och ansvarsfullt bolag och verkar i länder som inte alls tillämpar samma värderingsgrunder. Mm. Well, I think the important thing to, to remember is when you work in these countries, well, let's, let's, let's use Africa, because Africa is really what, what's on everybody's mind. Um, and um, you look at the continent today, it's a continent that's growing. It's, a, it's, it's most of the countries this day, uh, today are experiencing record growth. And um, the, the, country, the, the countries are improving day by day. I think that the conflict is, uh, is uh, at all time low. And uh, all that has to do with economic development. And you cannot have economic development without foreign investment in these countries. You have to help these countries develop their natural resources, because natural resources is a catalyst for, uh, uh, for economic development. And that leads, obviously, to improve the standard, livings, uh, living, uh, standard of living, and that also reduces uh, uh, problems like conflict, disease, and everything else. That's on, the, on, a, on a bigger scale. On a smaller scale, I think we can have a very positive influence in terms of what we do in the community development projects um, and, uh, you know, health, education, uh, providing fresh water, things like that, that can make an enormous difference to these local communities, which we need to, to, you know, to, to the, the support from them to, to operate. Vad gör ni mer rent praktiskt i sådana sammanhang? Alltså att, uh, well, what we do, I mean, we, we, we start these uh, community projects when we are operating on the ground. But ob obviously in places like Sudan, where we have no longer any activities, we, you know, we sold out in 2003, we still have today active uh, community development projects in South Sudan. And uh, I don't know, we were f hoping to show a small clip of that uh, afterwards, but uh, I don't know if there's time, but this is a fantastic project. Uh, it's called Woman for Woman in South Sudan, where we, su where we have trained th over 3,000 uh, women to, to basically be self-sustainable, to, to, to be able to, to farm their own crops and to feed their families, because uh, unfortunately in, in Africa it's mostly the women that, uh, that bring home the, the, the bread. Mm -hmm. But um, that uh, project, the, the, what's important with all these projects is that they have to be self-sustainable, so they, there is a continuity. Even if we're not there anymore, then they will, they will uh, uh, maintain their, their reason to exist. Vi hör hellre dig berätta om detta än att visa bio. Well, yeah, it's a short film. Har du, har du fler exempel, fler goda exempel? Well, I think, uh, you know, all the projects have their own um, uh, community development. I mean, if you look at, for example, what um, Lundin Mining is doing in uh, Congo, it's uh, even on a much bigger scale, you know, it's, uh, they have, uh, they're employing 5,000 people. Uh, these are locals which then support uh, their 20, fam 20 members of families each, so we are over 100,000 people are supported by this one project. And they get all the employees that uh, work for the mine, they get uh, free schooling for their children, they get free health care. I visited those mines and I visited the, the, the hospitals are better quality than I've seen in, Gen in Geneva where I live. So, uh, you know, nobody can fault Uh, what uh, these companies are doing in terms of uh, social uh, and CSR in those countries. All right. Ska jag ta en liten sån här liten svår, liten kris till mm. tredje och sista exemplet då på den uh, lite ovanligt stormiga bolagsstämman. Yes. Du kommer ihåg den? Yes. Du var där? <laughs> <Was there? laughs> Så tappar du humöret lite grann och lät mikrofonen försvinna från en av deltagarna. Jag tror det var en författarinna, Kerstin Lundell, som var lite påstridig om en ny oberoende utredning om Lundins aktiviteter i Sudan och Etiopien. Hur tänkte du då när du ryckte mikrofonen ifrån henne? Well, yeah, I think obviously I, you know, I was unfortunately a little bit, uh, I kind of lost my temper, I should say, but i mean, the, the reason I did that is really because I thought, you know, I was thinking about, you know, here we are, we're sitting at, with, um, with all our shareholders, our loyal shareholders that we meet once a year. Some of you shareholders have been with us from the beginning, you know, for, for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you've, you know, it hasn't always been a cruise 
you know, uh, easy cruise. But uh, you know, it, your loyalty has been very important to us. And and you have, you, we, for one, once a year, we all get together, and you get to hear from our uh, uh, our managing director, and then you get to to to, uh, to ask questions. And um, I think it's just a shame that um, you know you have one person who buys one share, who comes into the to the to the uh, shareholders meeting with a completely different agenda for, with, to to uh, to kidnap the discussion and 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 drift and talk about something that's not relevant to the to the business today. You know, so you know, yes, I should have let her speak. And you know, um, I've and yes, I have learned from uh, from that experience. Even though I'm, I'm sure that from in the future, we will probably do things differently. But my my motivation was the fact that you know that that um, I felt bad for our, for our shareholders, basically. Men du, <laughs> du har dem med dig. Tack, okay. tack. Fänklaren här. Tack. Men du, får man inte vara lite mänsklig? Får man inte tappa humöret lite? Va? Prob- uh, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> ja, men du säger, jag, jag skulle inte göra så igen. Varför inte? No, I think um, you know. You obviously, you know, the, the rules are the rules. If you own one share in the company, you should be able to ask a question. Uh, that's 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 the the bottom line. So, um, uh, but at the same time, there has to be there has to be some reason. There has to be a proper balance. Uh, and uh, I thought that the discussion had gone on just too long on that sing- single topic and there was just too many other um, important things to talk about. Du, 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 <coughs> varför inte låta kritikerna få en ny utredning? Den frågan uh, står ju kvar lite grann. That's the, yeah, the investigation. I think uh, we had also obviously a big debate about that uh, before and during the, the AGM. Um, when we had our own internal discussions uh, we we thought that we better seek some uh, legal advice on what's the best uh, p- way to, to 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 deal with the situation and um the legal advice we got at that point from uh, expert opinion was that we should let the prosecutor conduct his investigation um uh, without any kind of um Influence or interference from from our side. We shall obviously, you know, we we, we did make it made it very clear that we will keep a completely open um, open uh, doors and I, policy, and we will always obviously cooperate fully with the, with the investigation. So the decision was made that that we will not uh, do our own investigation to confuse any any issues that way. Vi ska strax gå in på betydligt uh, roligare ämnen mm. och uh, så är bara en sista fråga där. Va, vad har du lärt dig av den här massmediala uppmärksamheten i de här frågorna vi nu har mm. snuddat vid? Vad har varit svårast att hantera? Well, you always you try to learn and you try to improve. Uh, that's the bottom line. But I think, um, you know, um, again, I, what we have learned is that we need to we need to be maybe more media savvy and uh, we need to uh, probably um, you know deal with the media in a, in, a, in, a, in a better way than we have in the past. Men du vet om elaka murlarna låter sig aldrig hanteras ja, utan det är bara ja. elände. <laughs> du är något helt annat då det är som du brukar heta. Mm. Uh, jag tänker på Lundins nya jättefynd elefantfynd i Norge. Mm. Berätta lite mer om det. Vad är det ni har hittat? Yeah, Norge is my favorite. Uh, Nor- Norway is my favorite subject. I think uh, what we've done there is 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 quite an uh, incredible achievement. And I think again, when we talk about the media, is that uh, it's a bit of a shame that that's not being more recognized. Because when you think that uh, you know a small Swedish company comes in. Uh, when Nor- just as Norway decides to open the doors to uh, to the um, to the independent oil companies, we're the first ones in there, and now we're leading the charge to to basically turn around uh, the Swedish uh, the Swedish the Norwegian oil industry, mm-hmm. and it's a Swedish company that's doing that. What we found uh, today is is uh, in two, when we announced this discovery as uh, Johan Svendrup, it was the biggest discovery anywhere in the world um, during 2010. And today, it's, it's ranked among the top ten, uh, top five, sorry, uh, Norwegian oil fields. 
Um, but that's not the end of the story because we have a whole series of projects ongoing uh, between mm -hmm. uh, now and when Johan Sveder goes on production. We have one field that's coming on production next year. We have the, the Edward Grigg field is coming out in production in 2015. And uh, those fields, when, when once Johan Sverdrup is on production, will more than quadruple where we are today. So, uh, so we, we are looking at a very high, very steep uh, growth curve going forward. Uh, we have, we're generating a tremendous amount of uh, cash flow today already. And um, we have a very big exploration program. We're, we have, I think what we have is the best team in the world in terms of uh, what you can in terms of finding oil uh, on the Norwegian continental shelf. Hur uh, stort can that be? Well, I think that, um, you know, that it's, it's already been ranked pretty much as the top five oil fields in the world, and in Norway, sorry. Mm. Um, but um, I think what's, what we need to re really emphasize is that this would not have been possible if it wasn't for the, having the right team on the, on the ground. And it's the, the people that make this, this, this possible. And we make it possible for these people to do what they, what they do best, and that's to find oil. Finns det någon siffra, någon annan siffra du kan ge oss för att förstå hur stort det är eller kan bli? Mm. När ja. går du förbi Statoil? <laughs> well, we're right behind them. <laughs> But um, no, I, I, mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, in, uh, company will continue to grow. We're, I think we're today we're the second or uh, third largest independent oil company in, um, in uh, Europe. Um, I think there's no reason why we should not be the biggest, uh, the largest independent oil company in Europe uh, with, uh, when uh, with the uh, Johan Svedrup uh, um, goes on stream. Um, so um, we are, um, and we are, like I said, we have a very active exploration program. So this is not the end of the story. I think we will, you know, we will, there will be a good news flow coming continuously. I think we were, right now we have a very heavy drilling program. We're spending over five to five to six hundred million dollars a year just on exploration. Finns det någon risk för obehagliga överraskningar? Well, the risk, uh, the risk when you're in the oil business is dry holes. Um, and um, I think, you know, we're prepared for that. I think we're looking at, um, you know, we have a very aggressive exploration program. We will, we will have some dry holes, but I also expect to have some major more discoveries. Uh, the other risk that um, you are facing uh, as an oil company is the oil price. And uh, there, I think we're fairly well protected as well. The Norwegian tax system basically protects us against any, any, uh, any very steep downturn in the oil price. Och här är väl inte aktuellt med att torra hål, för du vet ju att det finns olja där nere, eller hur? Yes, I mean, yeah, but we know there is oil in on Johan Svedrup. Mm. We know there is, you know, these fields, that are, you know, these fields are getting being developed. But at the same time, we're looking for more fields mm. that are similar, uh, similar targets uh, to Johan Svedrup and uh, and to Edvard Grieg. So, um, you know, what we what we have developed is a geological concept, which uh, which quite incredible because it was the we found this 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 play concept in the middle of the ma most mature part of the North Sea. So these these concessions have been held uh, by major oil companies. It was actually the first block ever awarded offshore Norway, and uh, and uh, one of the companies drilled uh, missed this target by less than 100 meters. 100 meters. Yeah. So. Uh, so we're quite proud of that. Det har det goda med sig att peak oil existerar inte i din värld. Peak oil is a concept which which is totally logical because it's based on the fact that oil is a finite resource and that eventually we will you know we will fully uh, produce I think the last drop of oil will never be produced because it'll be too expensive or the last barrel uh, will never be uh, but the fact is that we are producing more oil then we're finding. So eventually the curve, you know, the, the we'll, we will start seeing a decline in global production. This has already happened in, the, in North America. It's happened already in Norway. So we will start to see a decline in global production. And that's, you know, that's the question is exactly when that will happen. But the fact of the matter is that we are today consuming the same amount of oil that has been discovered in the North Sea. Every year we're, we're consuming the same amount of oil that's been ever, ever been discovered in the North Sea. So there's a tremendous amount of oil to be 
that has to be replaced. And we are replacing a lot of that oil. I mean, there's been major discoveries made in, in Brazil, offshore Brazil. And now a new talk about shale oil uh, in North America, which the, they even say that maybe in North America or the USA will one day become self-sufficient. But the fact of the matter is that all this oil, whether it's Brazil or it's shale oil, or if it's tar sands in Canada, the only way they can be commercially developed is if we have a very high oil price. These, 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 these new discoveries don't make any sense at low oil prices. There has to be you know, above $100 a barrel for, for a lot of these projects to go ahead. Och uh, avrundningsvis, vad är din prognos för oljepriset? Uh, it will be higher than today. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, I, again, I, I mean, I've, I can't predict the oil price, but what I can say is that, you know, we are, we are, we are dealing with a finite resource, and that in order to to develop, fully develop the, this resource and do it in a, in a sound and economic fashion, we need high oil prices. Tack igen för den prognosen vi får se om du blir sandspådd. Hjärtligt tack för att du var med här ikväll. Tack så mycket. Stora applåd. Lite godbitar från Urban Bäckström. Och lite godsaker med chokladsmak. Tack. Hjärtligt tack. tack. Än en gång. En stor applåd.